Let's move on in this video and we're going to look at testing forms in Django applications. Now we've written this view here that gets all of the products from the database and it returns them as part of the context. And the template that we're returning here is going to display all of those products, but we also want to let users create a product as well. So we're going to create a form that's tied to our product model, and that's going to be a model form class in Django. So in order to do that, I've created a forms.py file, and we're going to start by creating this form now. So let's import the forms module, and that's part of the Django package, and we also import our product model as well. And we can create a class here, and that's going to be called product form. And that's going to inherit from Django's forms.modelForm class. And within the model form, we can define a nested inner meta class. And we can tie the model form to our product model. And we can specify the fields that we want to appear on the form when we want to create a new product using this form. Now we're going to pass a tuple of three fields here, the name of the product, the price, and the stock count. And for testing purposes, we're also going to add some validation to this product form. So I'm going to add a couple of validation functions here for these fields that we have on the form. And these are similar to code that we've written elsewhere, so I'm going to paste these in. The first one is clean price, so that's going to take the price field. And the convention in Django forms is if you want to have field level validation, you just prefix the name of the field with clean and underscore. And after that, we have the name of the field, which is price. And then the logic for the validation comes in this method. So we're just getting the price from the submitted data, which you can get in a Django form using self.cleaned data. And then we check if it's less than zero and we raise the validation error if that's the case. Otherwise, we just return the price and continue. So we're going to write that. And we're also going to write a similar function for the stock count. The logic is going to be exactly the same, except the price here is going to be switched out for the stock count. So let's go to below this function and we'll paste in clean stock count as well. And we can then save forms.py and go back to our views.py file. And in the products view at the bottom here, we're going to use this form. So let's import it at the top. We've imported the product form here. And in Django, what you can do is when the request comes in, you can check if it's a get or a post request. So we're going to use an if statement here. I'm going to check if request.method is equal to post. And if it is, we're going to instantiate that form, the product form, and pass the posted data into that. So that's going to populate the fields on the model form class. And then the key function we can call is form.isValid, and that's going to run the validation for the data that's been submitted for this form. If it is valid, what we can do is call form.save, and because it's a model form, it's going to take the submitted data and save it to the database. And then we can return a redirect here. And let's just redirect back to the products page, and we need to import the redirect helper function at the top. That's from the Django.shortcuts module, so let's save this file. And let's go back down here, and if we don't have a valid form, we can create an else block. And we're going to create a context dictionary here, and we're going to populate it with some products. And that's going to be equal to calling product.objects.all. So let's paste that in here. And what we want to do if we don't have a valid form is we want to return an additional piece of context, and that's the form. And we want to use the populated form here with whatever errors have occurred that has caused form.isValid to evaluate to false here. So that's the context, and then we can return products.html as a template. So let's return that from this block here. So that's going to handle the conditions if this is a post request, and it's going to return either a redirect if it's valid, or it's going to return the products.html file with the populated errors on this form here. If it's a GET request, it's going to just proceed and do this as normal, but we do need to add the form to the context, so I'm going to do that just now. So when we have a GET request, let's add a form key to the context, and we're going to instantiate the product form here. We don't pass any post data because it's not a post request, we're just adding the form to the context, and we can then reference that in the products.html template. So let's go to that template just now. Now what we have on this template is just an H1, and then we're looping over the products in the context and listing out the product name. All I'm going to do is paste some code just below the H1 here. So let's paste this in. We have a form with a method of post. We embed the CSRF token because you need to do that for post requests in Django. And then we render out the form as divs. So each field in the form will be a div tag. And then we have a button to submit the form. And I'm just using a simple HR to split the form from each of the product names below. Let's now save this and we can actually go to the page and test this out. And here's our page and you can see it's a very simple form. I'm going to fill this in with some data. So let's say we have a camera, a price of 500 and a stock count of two. We can submit this and you can see we get back the empty form. It's redirected and our camera has appeared below. Now we're not focusing at all on the user interface here. This doesn't look good. 
and it's not intuitive, but what we are going to do is just write some tests around the form submission process. And actually, before we do that, I'm going to fill this out so that we can see some invalid data. So we have a phone here and we have a negative price and stock count. So that's invalid data that we're submitting there. Before we actually submit this, what I want to do is go back to VS Code and notice this clean method that we had on the product model. We've moved the validation into the form. So what I'm going to do is just remove this clean method and we can save models.py. And we can change up the tests because we've refactored this a little bit. And I'm going to go to test models.py. And let's find the test that was calling that clean method. And it was this one here. So test negative price validation. We set the price to negative 10 and then we called clean here to raise that validation error. We can remove the two tests that are associated with this now that we've refactored this. So let's save our tests and make sure you save the models.py file. And what we can do is go back to the form here and let's submit this form now. And you can see we get the validation errors. So let's go back to VS Code and we're going to go to the tests directory and let's create a new file here that we're going to call test underscore forms.py. And this is where we can write tests for the form class. And we want to write two tests, one for a valid form submission and make sure that that's saved into the database. And we also want to write a test for the invalid submission to make sure that we get the expected state when we submit invalid data. At the top, I'm going to bring in three imports. We're importing the test case from Django as well as the reverse function and of course the product model here. And what we can write here is a class and I'm going to call this class product form test and that's going to inherit from the test case from the Django.test package. So let's create two methods here. The first one is going to test that we create a product when we submit valid form data. So that's going to test that we create that in the database. And the second method that we're going to write here is going to be called test don't create product when submitting invalid form. So we can just pass on the second one for now and we're going to start by writing the first method to test the submission of valid data. So what I'm going to do here is just create some form data. So we're giving the product a name of a tablet, a price of $299.99 and a stock count of 50. That is all valid data that we can submit here. So let's get a response by calling self.client and this time we're going to use the client.post method. And we're going to post that data to the products endpoint. So let's reverse the products URL that we have here. And we can attach that data here, as you can see in VS Code, using the data keyword argument. So we're going to submit the data and set that to the form data dictionary that we created on the line above. That will give us a response. We can then check that the product has been created and that we were redirected. So let's use the self.assert equal function here. And we can assert that response.statusCode is equal to 302, which indicates a redirect. And we can also call self.assert true here. And what I'm going to do here is perform an ORM query. So product.objects.filter. And let's try and get a product with the name of tablet. And that was what we specified in this dictionary that we posted above. So we're pulling that out of the database and we're going to check if such a query set exists using the dot exists function. And that will evaluate to true or false depending on whether this statement here has any results. So we expect that to have results. So we're using self.assert true. And if this does evaluate to true, then we know the product has been created in the database. So let's go to the terminal now and I'm going to stop the server and we can clear the terminal and we're going to run the test command. And you can see that we've ran 11 tests and all have passed. So let's now write the second function. And that's going to test that when we submit invalid data, we don't create a new product and we get the expected returned form. Now, like before, we're going to create a dictionary here with some data, but this data contains some invalid pieces of information. So, for example, we don't have a name and that's required and we have a negative price and negative stock and that's going to trigger that validation error. We can copy the line of code that we had above here when we used self.client.post. So we're going to again post that data to the server and we can check that we get a 200 status when we post that because we expect to stay on the page and that gives the user the chance to correct the validation errors. So I'm just going to paste this in because we've seen it before. Self.assert equal and we're checking the status code is 200. And I'm going to use a second assertion here and let's look at the assert true function and we're going to check that the form is in the response.context. So response.context. So when we submit the data, we get back the form in the response.context. And if we go to views.py, the reason for that is that when we hit the else block, in other words, when the form is not valid, we are adding that form to the context so that the user can correct the errors. So let's go back to testforms.py. That's another assertion we want to make here when we submit invalid data. And what we can also do is pull the form out of response.context. So response.context and then we can key into that and get the form. 
And then we can use another assertion that's added by Django, and that's the assert form error assertion. This is going to assert that a given field on the form object has a specific error. So we can pass the form into that, and what we can also do is pass the name of the field. So the name field we expect to have an error because if we look at the name above here, it contains an empty string, and it's a required field. So the error message we expect here is this one here. It says this field is required. I'm going to copy this down to the line below and we can also add or check for the price field. Now the error is going to be different for the price and it's because we have a negative value in that field. If we go back to forms.py here and look at clean price, this message here is what we expect to see. Price cannot be negative. So let's paste that in here. And we're going to have a similar one for the stock count. So let's copy the line to the line below. The name of the field is stock count and we can change the message we expect so that it matches what's in forms.py in this validation error. So that's some new errors that we're checking here using the assert form error method. And one last thing we need to check is to make sure that no product was created in the database because this is invalid data. So we can use self.assert false for this and we can call product.objects.exists. And basically this is going to return true if any products exist in the database and false otherwise. And the reason that no products are going to exist is because this test function here is isolated and the one above that created the product and we checked for its existence here on line 19, that is also going to be isolated and this product that's added here will be rolled back at the end of the test. So let's test this out now and go back to our terminal and run python manage.py test. You can see we've got 11 tests and they're all passing. Now I just want to make sure that this is picking up the tests that we have here. And like before, we can pass a path to the test function if we want to run the test forms.py tests in isolation. So let's do that just now. That was in products.tests.testForms. And that module has two tests, as you can see, and both are passing. So we've now written some tests for our Django form, and we're testing both conditions when we submit valid data and invalid data. In the next video, what we're going to do is move on to scenarios that include authentication in Django, and we're going to test that we get the expected results for authenticated users versus anonymous users.